So, heart rate. What is your heart rate? Your heart rate is just really the amount of times your, um, your heart pumps in one minute, okay? So 60 seconds. 60 seconds, all right? Now, in a normal adult, it's around 60 to 100. That's our sinus node firing, telling our heart, our little pacemaker in the heart, our sinus atrial node, SA node, telling our um, heart to pump 60 to 100 beats per minute. Boop, 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 right? So that's normal. Um, patients who have very, very good cardiovascular output, they'll be sometimes lower. Like uh, Lance Armstrong will probably be around the 34. That's normal for him. Now, if I get an elderly patient who has um, history of any type of electrical problems in the heart, because your heart, if you don't know already, is really a mixture of two things. You have electrical impulses, and you also have mechanical openings. It's almost just like a door at Walmart or a door at your local mall, uh, electrical door. If the electricity goes out, you can still open the door and close it, right? But if it's an electrical door, it needs that electricity to open and close. So your SA node, your AV node, your intranodular tracts, your bundle of hiss, your Purkinje fibers that really squeeze the ventricles, that, guys, is your electrical conduction system. And your mitral valve, your aortic valve, your pulmonic valve, your um, bicuspid valve, your tricuspid valve, okay? You guys, those are the doors. So they open and close, okay? Now, before I even get into that, um, that's a whole other EKG course that I teach. That's about a 2.5 hour course I really condense everything you need to know about EKGs at uh, 15secondekg.com. Basically designed, you can read any EKG in 15 seconds. That's really why I created the course. So guys, uh, heart rate. Why do we test the heart rate? What do we want to know? Well, heart rate, um, we want to know how well the body is compensating. Is it normal? For the patient to have a 60 to 100 heart rate. Is that normal? Yeah, it should be. Uh, the patient comes in with a heart rate of 110, 115. Is that normal for the patient? If the patient's usually at 60, why is their heart rate tacky now? Why is it really high? What's called tachycardia. Um, there can be a few reasons, guys. They can be either short of breath, not being able to breathe, they can have a lot of pain, substernal chest, pre uh, chest pressure, having chest pain. They can be having an MI, a heart attack. Their heart goes up. Heart rate goes up. They can be having an anxiety attack. <sighs> right? Getting all worked up. They can be dehydrated. Right? If you have way less fluid moving around the body now, uh, your body has to pump all that less fluid around the body at a faster rate because that fluid, that blood, now has to work double time to transport all the oxygen and nutrients and all the wastes because there's half of it, basically half of the blood's there, so now it has to do double the work. So usually it increases in rate and it tries to compensate that way. Um, now. When you have a temperature, guys, when you have a temperature, most people, most nursing school students miss this completely. When you have a temperature, does your heart rate go up or does your heart rate go down? When you have a fever, I should say. Fever. So your patient comes in for a uh, 101.2 is really when a fever starts. That's when most hospitals say, we're not going to give Tylenol until 101.2, which is retarded. But... 101.2, is the fever, is the heart rate going to go up or down? It's going to go up. Great. Fantastic. Why does it go up? Why? Well, it goes up because um, the body's trying to push around all of the um, white blood cells. The mast cells stabilize. Basically, the mast cells have gone to the site of infection, opened up 
your blood vessels, and now your heart rate's going and working overtime to get that infection and to fight it, and to get more troops to that source of infection. All those plasma cells, those neutrophils, the, um, the white blood cells in general, right? So, that's where your heart rate goes up. Now, when does it go down? Why does the heart rate go down? So, when we sleep, usually your heart rate goes down. And this really just has to do, let me get this here. This really just has to do with your CNS, whoops, whoa. Your uh, central nervous system, I'm sorry, your um, PNS, your peripheral nervous system, and your SNS, sympathetic nervous system. If you haven't seen my lecture on that, I really recommend that because these are the two nervous systems um, that really regulate your body in terms of, um, you know, should I be stressed out and really should I focus all my blood on fighting and flighting on my airway, <laughs> my airway and um, my heart? Or, you know, can I rest and digest? Can I do the um, parasympathetic? I call this one the poop. The poop nervous system because it helps you poop. The stress nervous system, because when you're stressed, your heart needs blood and your lungs need blood. It's just really who needs the blood and when do they need it and why. So if your SNS, your sympathetic nervous system, it goes up, your heart rate will go up. If you're sleeping and you're resting, right, and digesting, then your poop nervous system, your parasympathetic nervous system, you don't need the blood to your heart and to your lungs when you're just sleeping, right? You're just sleeping, snoozing. So your heart rate goes down and you relax, right? Hopefully that makes sense just a little bit. Your heart rate can also go down if you're taking beta blockers that block beta receptors in the heart. Beta blockers are just um, um, specific medications that block that um, adrenergic response, aka we're blocking this sympathetic nervous system, okay? Beta blockers block that sympathetic nervous system. So we're trying to turn on this parasympathetic because that heart, usually CHF, heart failure patients, that heart is really having trouble to pump because there's so much fluid that it's really being backed up and it's having trouble to pump. So the kidneys, basically where the heart, where the blood's going, from the heart, the kidneys are saying, hey, you're not giving me enough blood here, dear. I need some more blood, Maj. And so the kidneys say, you know what? I gave you, let's say, four liters of blood. I want back four liters of blood. But the hot, dear, the hot is not keeping its end of the deal. So <laughs> the kidneys send up four liters of blood but they only get back, let's say, two liters of blood because that heart is having such a hard time pumping. Congestive heart failure. So what do the kidneys do? If you paid someone $4 and only got back $2, what would you do next time? Heck no, I'm not going to give you $4. I'm going to give you $2, right? I'm going to hold on to as much money as I can so that I'm not screwed in the end, right? Same thing with the kidneys. Kidneys say, hey, I'm holding on to the fluid, baby. I got the fluid. So I'm holding on to this fluid. I'm not letting it go. My aldosterone is shutting down the kidneys. We're keeping all that sodium in. And that's why I'm holding on to these kidneys. Aldosterone is my bouncer for the kidneys, holding in all that sodium. So fluid builds up. Then the heart is even more stressed out because it has to pump against volume and more resistance. And that's when your heart rate has to go up, right? So, let's get into blood pressure next, but hopefully that makes sense in terms of why your kidneys hold on to fluid and hold on um, to um, sodium with aldosterone. So we give ACE inhibitors, lisinoprils, all the pril drugs, to block aldosterone, let the sodium out, hopefully drain the fluid, right? We give diuretics to get, like Lasix, furosemide, right? to get all that excess fluid out of the bloodstream. 
okay? We're taking pressure off of that heart. We're saying, kidneys, it's not all about you. We need to take pressure off that heart, okay? We get beta blockers. Tell that heart to slow down. It's cool, bro. We can, you know, block that sympathetic nervous system. We give calcium channel blockers to tell the vascular system, hey, it's okay, relax. Um, tell the blood vessels and the heart itself to not be so stimulated, not be so electrically excitable, okay? I have a great fluid and electrolyte course that uh, is really, goes, I sell for $47, uh, but you know what, I'm having a special if you guys go to simplenursing.com, you can get it for $8.47. So next guys, we're going to go into blood pressure and what really blood pressure is. So let's get into it.